when you take a look at a primary, uh, experience tells, tells us that a uh, primary is very difficult from a turnout perspective to forecast. Uh, I think that the, the uh, uh, inability to forecast uh, turnout and the inability to necessarily drive turnout uh, through TV, I mean, they just can't spend enough money on TV to drive turnout in this campaign. I think it, it, it presents an advantage to those uh, Democrats who are already elected officials. Uh, for instance, Kathleen Rice. I mean, she can uh, rely presumably on her base in, in Nassau County. Uh, Brodsky up in Westchester could rely on his base. Uh, so to, to the extent that uh, Coffee and Danilo are not currently elected officials and don't have a, a, a base of, of electoral support that has already elected them to some position, they might be disadvantaged. But on the other hand, they both have prosecutorial experience uh, that I think is an advantage for them. Looking at these five Democrats, who do you think the strongest candidate is going into September 14th? Well, conventional wisdom would say that in a Democrat primary, the most liberal of the five would end up winning. Um, it seems to be much like on the Republican side, the, the more conservative elements of the Republican Party show up on primary day. The flip side of that coin is on the Democrat side, the, the more liberal elements of the party show up on primary day. So it, it, conventional wisdom would suggest that the most liberal of them, uh, and I suppose that's uh, 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 Schneiderman, um, I think that he's kind of positioned himself as the, the liberal, the most liberal in the race. Uh, conventional wisdom would say that, that he probably has a leg up if you believe in those dynamics. But I, I think that Kathleen Rice cannot be uh, overlooked in this race. She's a sitting DA. She's the only woman amongst five candidates in the race. She has a proven record uh, in Nassau County as DA. Uh, she's had enough money to be on, on TV, uh, both downstate and upstate. So I don't think uh, that you can discount her. Uh, but on the other hand, again, because, you know, Brodsky comes from, uh, you know, Bo Brodsky's been in, in the system for a long time. He has a strong electoral base. I don't think he could discount uh, any of these candidates this year, although, as I said previously, I think that uh, Coffee and Danalo probably without a, a proven electoral base um, might have trouble generating enough energy to, to prevail in this primary. But if you're Dan Donovan going into this election, who do you most want to take on? There has been some speculation by conservative analysts that you want Eric Schneiderman because he is so liberal. But you're noting a few candidates that maybe aren't as strong as Schneiderman. So who would you want to take on? Well, I didn't say that the other candidates aren't as strong as Schneiderman. I think that Danalo and Coffey are very strong uh, candidates if they can get to the general election. But I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm suggesting that the dynamics of a primary might make it difficult for them to get to primary day. But they have strong credentials uh, uh, to be attorney general, just like the other, the other three do. Um, uh, first of all, if you're Dan Donovan, much as uh, uh, in 1994, I was eager just for an opponent. Um, it's di difficult from the time of uh, the convention, and in my instance, uh, you know, I started in October of 1993, months before the convention. So I was actually in the race for a, almost a, f a full year, uh, from October of 93 to September of 94, before I knew who my opponent was. It's very difficult for Donovan, uh, and it has been difficult for Donovan over the past several months, uh, to 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 mount an effective campaign without necessarily knowing who your opponent is. So uh, I know that uh, uh, Dan Donovan will be happy come uh, the Wednesday after primary day just to now have an opponent to match up against. Um, I, I don't know if I could speculate on, on Dan's behalf who he would rather run against versus not run against, but I do think, uh, again drawing on the analogy in 1994, Karen Bernstein won the Democrat primary in 1994. She was, without question, the, the most liberal of the four candidates who were running, although Ali Capel was certainly had a long liberal uh, tradition and track record in, in the assembly. But Karen Bernstein was, was even more liberal than him, and she prevailed in that race. Um, so I think that if you're Donovan, you're sitting back and, and hoping that the most liberal candidate uh, ends up winning that primary because it just creates such a a, a stark contrast between the the goals and objectives and the, the, the priorities of the two candidates. 
How do you think the dynamics of this election changes after primary day when it is one Republican up against one Democrat? It'll change in a, in a, a variety of different ways. Uh, first of all, now Donovan will engage. Uh, Donovan will, will uh, have a candidate, as I mentioned earlier, to match up against both, um, you know, pri primarily his, his record and his uh, goals and objectives for the office. It'll just be easier to, to contrast yourself and uh, to set yourself apart when you have an identifiable, uh, identifiable uh, opponent. Uh, the other way that uh, the race will change is Donovan will be able to start raising money and raise money more aggressively because his opponent is now a known commodity. Um, the, the race will also be changed because uh, presumably the Democrats have spent quite a bit of money, if not all of the money that they currently have in their coffers. So while Donovan, who has been steadily out there raising money uh, over the course of the last several months, uh, all of the Democrats have not only been raising, but more importantly have been spending their money. So whoever prevails on the Democrat side of the primary will end up, um, you know, with a double-edged sword. I mean, he or she will be the winner on uh, primary day, but then come the very next day, they're going to have to go back to dialing for dollars because presumably their campaign coffers will have been exhausted. Yeah, it's certainly been a really interesting race to watch as they've gone through the motions, spent all of this money, really came out strong. But whoever wins in the November general election, what are the objectives you think they really need to come out strong in in the position of attorney general? You know, um, I think that the, the, the public's perception of the attorney general um, is, is far different from the pundits. It's even different, I think, from the perspective of many of the, the candidates uh, in this particular race. Uh, I think that the, the, the general public looks at the attorney general as not only the lawyer for the state who's going to represent uh, the state when the state is sued in court or you know, representing state agencies, but I think that generally the public views the attorney general as, as a, uh, an office holder who is responsible for the public well-being, the public safety. Um, I took a lot of criticism for changing the direction of the Attorney General's office uh, in, the, in the 1990s. It had long been uh, viewed as simply a consumer protection agency, a, 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 an uber, super, uh, a, a super um, a, a consumer protection agency. Uh, but we, we expanded the role and the mission of the office. Uh, we attacked uh, child pornography on the internet. We were engaged in assisting DAs across New York State in combating violent crime. Uh, the role of the office did change, and, and I'm happy to say that my, my successors, both Elliot Spitzer and Andrew Cuomo, sort of took up that theme of the, the office being more of a law enforcement entity um, and, and, and began to use the resources of the office, maybe not exactly in the fashion that we did when I was there, but along a similar path. Uh, let's not forget that Elliot Spitzer was once dubbed the Sheriff of Wall Street because he used the, the, the enforcement, the, the, the prosecutorial power of the office, if you will, to um, advance his, his, his goals and, and, and agenda. Uh, we started that. We, we changed the complexion of the office uh, to, 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 to establish that, that base, if you will, uh, for the Attorney General to be, uh, that, that office to be employed in an enforcement and a more uh, uh, aggressive regulatory fashion. I think that's the way the general public views the office. I think that the general public believes that the attorney general and the 1,700 or so lawyers that are in that office, that they have a primary responsibility of, of protecting the, the public well-being, whether it's from Wall Street or from predators of our kids on the Internet. I think that's the view, vantage point that the general public has of the office. And frankly, that's the role I think the office should be playing. Well, you're talking about your tenure in office, and as far removed as it's been, you actually play a role in last night's debate of the five attorney general candidates. You were actually brought up. So let me play a quick soundbite from you from Eric Schneiderman, who attacked you and your record when you held that office. Of the Democratic primary will prevail. There's no way the voters of the state of New York want to go back to an anti-choice, anti-reform candidate like Dan Donovan. We tried that with Dennis Vacco. It's not going to happen. So he's saying there, it's not going to happen. What do you think? What's your response to that? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm flattered that uh, uh, 12 years out of office and uh, the Democrats are still concerned about uh, my policies and uh, my vision for that office and for New York State. Um, I, look, at, at the end of the day, I think that this decision is going to be left up to the voters. 
Uh, do they want somebody like uh, Schneiderman who is exceedingly liberal? I mean, I guess he, he's in an offhanded way saying that I was exceedingly conservative and by extension he's suggesting that Dan Donovan, who's the DA of Staten Island, is, is equally conservative. Frankly, I think uh, the voters will have to decide whether they want somebody who is uh, law enforcement minded, somebody who is focused on uh, the most important issues that face New Yorkers today. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm flattered that, uh, that Eric should, should reference me, but I'm also very, very proud of the fact uh, that you have to go a long way back in history in New York State to find an attorney general who stood before the United States Supreme Court as I did. Uh, when, I, when I won a, 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 an important decision in a case involving uh, uh, assisted suicide, physician assisted suicide, uh, if he thinks, if, if Eric believes that I'm uh, ultra conservative because I stood up for uh, the, 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 the very weak and frail and elderly at their most desperate moments at the end of life, if he thinks that that's being ultra conservative, then I'm, I'm happy that he criticizes me in that fashion. All right, we want to thank you so much for joining us, Dennis Vacco, the former Attorney General of New York State. Thank you so much for your time. Kaylin, thank you.